Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking a little bit about some upcoming severe weather, but also mostly a big upcoming Arctic blast that is going to be entering into especially the central United States, but also the eastern United States. We'll be talking about that in just a moment. Anyways, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, when do you think this cooldown will end? and we will finally enter into a summer-like pattern. How long do you think that's going to take? Let me know an approximate date that you think in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video, though, and first things first, we're taking a look at our temperature anomalies for the day today, and as you can see, we're dealing with a mostly warmer-than-normal conditions for the entire United States here, outside of a little bit of the plains there in some eastern regions of Colorado and Wyoming. Uh, mostly the eastern United States is very warm, and then also the western United States, with the exception of the immediate west coast there. Now, as we move towards tomorrow morning, Sunday, April 11th, you can see the eastern United States is still very warm. The southwest is still very warm, but we see the northwest has now finally cooled down as well. And that is kind of the beginning of that trend towards a colder pattern beginning already there. Uh, it's going to start from the west and work its way east. That is going to be kind of how we watch this progress here. Let's just take this towards about Monday, April 12th. And as you can see, that has moved now further inland towards the Rockies, towards the plains. Uh, we see the West Coast has warmed up, and that is a positive PNA. We've seen kind of a switch towards a positive PNA, and that actually encourages colder than normal conditions out east. So this is going to basically work its way further and further east eventually. It's going to be a very slow process. As you can see, we have a southeast ridge, which is going to keep things quite warm for the eastern United States for a while, actually. Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, the entire Gulf states of the United States, up to the Ohio Valley, uh, the Great Lakes, the Northeast, with the exception of a bit of a cool down there. We'll call it near normal overall for the Northeastern United States. But yeah, the Southeast and the Mid-Atlantic is certainly looking warm by this point on Monday, April 12th. We're certainly seeing a pleasant pattern still in the Eastern United States after the weekend ends and as we're working our way through early next week. This is going to allow for that severe weather to continue. They don't like a very cold uh, pattern for severe weather, but when we see this warm in the south, uh, that is going to allow for continued thunderstorms and severe weather to be possible. Uh, it would take a full Arctic blast in the eastern United States, which it appears we could get eventually uh, to really just hinder that severe weather entirely. Now, as we move towards Tuesday, April 13th, you can see that cooldown is becoming a lot more potent there for the Rockies and the Plains. We still have a southeast ridge. You can see that cooldown is actually impacting these regions a little bit more by this point. That positive PNA is becoming a little bit more prominent. We see the entire west coast of the United States and especially the western regions of Canada there. That is a very classic signal of a positive PNA. And again, that does encourage colder than normal conditions for first off the central United States, but also most times the eastern United States as well. Although you can still see we do have some pleasant conditions there for the southeast holding on. Uh, very, very tightly there to the southeastern United States by this point. Uh, so we are seeing a pattern that looks, it's, it's a little bit stuck right now, but we are going to see this eventually switch up in a moment. So what we're going to do here is we're going to move on, and we're going to move on towards the very next day uh, on Wednesday, we're just going to progress with that, eventually switching to the European Ensemble model, where we will be able to work much further into this forecast here. Now, by the time we're reaching about Wednesday at about 2 p.m. here on April 14th, you can see that we will be taking a look at far below normal temperatures still for the central regions of the United States, Texas there, Kansas, Nebraska, South Dakota, North Dakota there, Colorado, Wyoming, and Montana there especially. Uh, in those blue, first off, in those greens, that's where we're 10 to 15 degrees below normal, so very, very cold. But it's those blues, 15 to 30 degrees below normal is where we're still especially concerned there obviously as we're taking a look at very far below normal temperatures for those regions and those magenta shades inside of that that's where we're about 30 degrees or more below normal so just very very potent arctic blast here for this time of year we're seeing uh, according to this model again the eastern united states is still trying to hold on to some of that warmth the western united states as well it's kind of like a battle here uh, as they're just trying to figure out where that cold is going to go. It's stuck over the central United States, as you can see. By the time we're reaching about Thursday, April 15th, you can see it's a lot of the same. Still that very, very potent cold air. It's regressed a little bit further towards just to the north now, uh, but still just very cold. The northeast has really warmed up by this point, actually, as well. So the, the eastern United States is going to try to hang on to that pleasant weather through the week next week into mid to late next week. 
But let's just switch to that European Ensemble model where we're going to be able to work much further into this uh, just extended range outlook from this model. You can see here by the time we're taking a look at it, Friday, April 16th, you can see the Western United States is still dealing with that warmth. Same with the Northeastern United States and cold all around for the Central and really just most of the United States. By the time we reach Saturday, and this is going to be April 17th, you can see this has moved a little bit further south and a little bit further east. So it's finally making a little bit of a move. The northwestern United States is looking very warm by this point. So definitely an interesting pattern we find ourselves in here. Uh, still that potent cold air, like I said. And take a look at this. By the time we're reaching Sunday, April 18th, you can see that we see that colder air moving further south, but also further east as that northeastern region of the United States is now moving towards cooler than normal conditions. It's in the lighter blues right now, which is still just going to be below normal temperatures. So it's going to be enough to just push us into that below normal temperature category there. The western United States is certainly warming up further and further, which means we're going to have a stronger and stronger positive PNA by the time we reach this point in this pattern. We will take a look at those teleconnections in just a moment. So what we're going to do here is we're going to move on, and we're just going to move further through this outlook. Monday, the 19th, Tuesday, the 20th, we're just going to move further into this in just a moment. All right, now here we are taking a look at Monday, April 19th. And as you can see, those below normal temperatures are still located over similar regions there. But as you can see, the western United States has now warmed up significantly. Uh, we're seeing that work its way further inland, which just means that positive PNA is becoming stronger and stronger. By the time we reach Tuesday, April 20th, you can see it's the same thing. It's reaching further inland here by this point. That cool down is moving further east and it's becoming a little less potent there. By the time we reach Wednesday, a lot of these similar trends continue. That colder air is moving a little bit further east, very, very slowly, but surely. Same story in the western United States with that warm-up. It's moving, again, further and further inland there. And then by the time we reach about Friday, April 23rd, you can see that cooldown is now centered over mostly the Ohio Valley and then the upper Midwest there. And, and that has really just reached the southeastern United States and the northeastern United States finally by this point. So this will eventually reach all the way to the eastern seaboard is the thought process right now according to most of these models. Uh, the southwestern United States is still dealing with that positive PNA here by this point as well. Uh, so we find ourselves in a very definitive pattern uh, that is going to last quite a while. It looks like this one is going to take a, a long time to work its way out. Now let's just take a look at what this, this is what the Climate Prediction Center has to say. And this is their 6 to 10 day outlook which is going to be from Thursday, April 15th through Monday, April 19th. And as you can see, that cooldown will be centered over mostly the central United States here, as you can see, and it's going to be very potent. They're more than 90% sure that this will be below normal temperatures for this period for that region. So they are extremely confident. Also, the western United States there, you can see that definitive positive PNA. But by the time we reach that 8 to 14 day temperature probability outlook for Saturday, April 17th through Friday, April 23rd, you can see that we will be dealing with a little bit of an eastern trend here. Well, that positive PNA becomes a lot more definitive, and we see that that cooldown moves further and further eastward. It's still over the south central United States, but now it's extending all the way through the Ohio Valley. Uh, so a very, very interesting pattern we find ourselves in, and this just progresses and evolves further eastward here, as you can see. And let's just take a look at those teleconnections. The Arctic Oscillation, which in its negative phase encourages colder than normal conditions in the United States, and in its positive phase, this encourages warmer than normal conditions in the United States. And really, this just stays neutral the whole time. So that's going to be a non-factor. The NAO, the North Atlantic Oscillation, is the same thing. In its negative phase, it encourages colder than normal conditions. In its positive phase, it encourages warmer than normal conditions. But the thing with the NAO is it's mostly for the eastern United States here. So it is going to be in its negative phase very early on. Uh, but it's not going to be enough to counter that negative PNA we're going to find ourselves in. So we will not be seeing mostly colder than normal conditions in the east, as you saw before. For the next five to seven days, we're going to be mostly dealing with actually warmer than normal conditions in the eastern United States. This eventually reaches kind of just a neutral phase, just like the AO. But it's this PNA that's going to be driving the pattern here, as you can see. We're in a very far negative PNA, and that's what is allowing that warmer than normal conditions in the eastern United States. A negative PNA encourages the warmer air in the east, colder air in the west. This is going to switch positive by the time we reach the 13th. Give it a day or two to lag. And as you can see, by the time we're reaching about the 16th, we will be and will have, have been in a positive phase for a few days there. And that's when we're going to start to see those warmer than normal conditions develop in the western United States, encouraging the colder air for the central and the eastern United States. And as we just stay in this longer and longer, because you can see this lasts all the way through the 25th of April, uh, it's just going to become more and more definitive as we see that warmer air 
uh, kind of exit out of the eastern United States and enter into the western United States, and then the colder air is going to move further and further eastward there. Anyway, I wanted to mention we also have an enhanced risk of severe weather today. I just wanted to mention this real quick. A marginal risk for very widespread regions and then a slight risk there in the yellow. Uh, this is mostly for a wind risk, but we also have some chances of hail here, as you can see, and a little bit of a chance of tornado. So pay attention today as we do have a pretty uh, significant chance of severe weather, especially there in the Gulf states. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, when do you think our next severe weather outbreak is going to be? And Cloud Watcher said, I think our next severe weather outbreak will start April 15th. And I don't really know if I agree or not, but I thought this was pretty bold. And I'm interested to see if this will play out that way. I'm sure Cloud Watcher had some evidence to say uh, that. I'm sure you had some reason why you're saying that. Uh, so good comment of the day there. Anyway, for our confidence tab, we're at a four out of six. Obviously, we've talked about some longer range things today, uh, talking all the way through late into the month of April. Uh, so we're going to have to see if all this plays out this way. We could see some changes, obviously. So we're going to be watching for all of those things. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Property Damage, John Van Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Alan Belemo, Adam S., Leather the Pan, Donna Carnes, Cameron Marshall, and Aiden Mattis, alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Alan Cherry, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Michael Buell, Catfight, Charles Stinnett, Kellen Menhart, It's Jay, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Flego, Garys, and John Colisi. If you'd like to be a part of this patron highlight of the day, you could do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below where we've been trying to bring more awesome posts for you guys. So you can check that out there on the Patreon page, which again is in that link in the description and in the pinned comments down below. Anyway, for our channel membership, uh, I want to thank all of our channel members, obviously, but especially our Weather Top Dog, Hair Farms 1, and then our super fan, Phoenix Nimitz. If you'd like to join this channel membership, you can do so by clicking that button next to the subscribe button and checking out our awesome tiers that have awesome features. That's going to be, again, next to that subscribe button. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button. Be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.